All right, so today I want to introduce you to a ball python morph that even if you're a beginner, you should be aware of, and that is the desert ball python. And I would say there's extreme positives and extreme negatives with this gene. I would say on the positive side, it is probably the king of combos like I have never seen with any other ball python morph. You mix it with almost anything and it looks 100% better. Some of these combos, I actually pulled some up on the internet and they just kind of blew me away. I knew it looked better with a lot of combos, but I didn't realize the incredible potential of the desert gene when you mix it with a lot of these others. And on the flip side, I would say most people don't work with the desert because of the fertility of the females. And it's, it's kind of interesting when it first came out, I remember looking at some of the old videos on YouTube that people were like, this is the best ball python morph ever. I'm going to breed it through all my racks. And some of the combinations were just incredibly looking. As a matter of fact, I saw one guy just recently on a YouTube video, he's still working with the desert. And every single snake that he pulled out, and it's, it was so incredible. I'm like, well, why doesn't my snakes look like the snakes that this guy is making? It is really incredible. And come to find out it was actually the desert that nobody really works with and pretty much what happened was is after people started breeding the first desert through their collection they realized you know it takes a few years to grow up the females and when they tried to breed the females back any female that contained a desert gene actually ended up laying an entire clutch of slugs basically infertile eggs or the females actually died when they were laying eggs, which is really unfortunate. And to my knowledge, I don't think I've ever seen anyone with a desert female actually lay a clutch of viable eggs. So essentially there is no super form because of the, the problem with the females. And we consider it a dominant mutation because really you need desert male and a desert female to breed them back together to get two copies of the gene to actually make the super desert. Now I don't think I've ever heard of anyone producing the super desert. As a matter of fact, ever since the problem with the females and the fertility, pretty much everyone has gotten out of the desert game. And I actually looked on the internet and there's just a few snakes on morph market that actually contain the desert gene only one was a male and two were females and the females essentially are sold as pet only snakes and it's it's kind of interesting i'd say selling snakes that have a problem with the fertility in the females because essentially when you're buying into a project you buy as especially as a breeder and you're buying with the potential of creating more snakes and selling those to recoup your costs on the investment and with the desert gene it's i would say it's it really comes down to supply and demand people hear desert and they're like there's no way i'm jumping on that bandwagon and i would say most people they know when they hear desert that there's a problem with the females but most people i would say don't really know the potential of the desert and what's actually been done and how impressive some of your snakes can look when mixing the desert into your collection so what i want to do is i want to jump over to my internet and i want to show you the potential the positive side of the desert ball python all right, so if you haven't actually seen the potential of the desert in combinations, it is going to blow you away. As a matter of fact, I was, after I was looking at some of these combos, I was thinking maybe I should get into the project just to serve a really small audience as far as buying really impressive ball pythons that are only pet quality and kind of serve people that want really impressive snakes for a pretty low price and uh, with, with basically without the intention of breeding those snakes. I think it'd be kind of interesting to jump on kind of that angle of breeding snakes breed just for pet quality so remember if you actually have a male you could breed it to all your other non-desert females produce a whole bunch of deserts and there's no problems at all it's only when you try to breed a female that contains the desert gene where you run into problems so potentially you could actually breed some of these combos you just have to be careful never to breed a female so first I just wanted to show you what a straight desert ball looks like. This it's pretty incredible. It looks it looks really impressive just by itself. I'd say 
It almost looks like maybe a pastel Enchi. It almost looks it almost looks like a pastel Desert Ghost, really, because the Desert Ghost tends to reduce the pattern, make it really bright, and it's pretty impressive. So what I want to do is I want to show you first just the base jeans before we mix in the Desert. And, and don't confuse this with the Desert Ghost because the Desert Ghost is a completely separate gene. This is just the Desert Ball Python, a co-dominant mutation. So take a look at this. This is just a straight pinstripe. And you know, I love the pinstripes are really pretty much the only snake that is really bright gold. It's a really gold. It usually has a stripe right down the back. And take a look at this. This is going to blow you away. What happens when you add desert into a pinstripe? This is amazing. I can't even believe the difference between a regular pinstripe and the desert pinstripe. I'd say there's not a lot of morphs out there that'll actually just change a pinstripe and make it look so dramatic. It is pretty incredible. And, and the funny thing is, is usually if you're looking at different morphs, a lot of times if you take like a random morph, it usually doesn't work well with all the other morphs all across the board. Usually if you have something, say like a bamboo, the, kind of the bamboo that works really well with just certain things like the calico, and then you mix the bamboo with pastel and it doesn't really have that big of an effect. But it seems like the desert pretty much across the board works well with an incredible number of genes. So take a look at this. You know, I really like the spiders. The problem with the spider is it tends to have a head wobble there's a lot of people against the spider but I really like just the, the the straight spider it's almost like it's almost like a golden snake with uh, it almost looks like a pinstripe with calico and anchi and a lot of stuff but it's just a straight dominant mutation the spider it's pretty amazing just by itself and look what happens when you mix desert in with the spider it is pretty incredible and they actually call this the tiger uh no actually the tiger is yeah, i take that back the tiger is actually the desert with the enchi which i don't actually have up here but it looks pretty similar to uh to the tiger which is the desert enchi which is kind of interesting so take a look at this this is just a straight mojave you know it's a pretty common morph i say there's a lot of people working with mojave look at this when you mix the desert with mojave look at this crazy snake that is that is one of the most incredible snakes i've ever seen it's pretty incredible all right take a look at this this is the lesser ball python and i'm sure you're probably familiar with the lesser it is in the blue-eyed leucistic family and lessers mix really well with a lot of different genes look what happens when we mix desert with lesser it is pretty incredible it even enhances the lesser that is a really crazy combination it is really amazing so let's just keep going it's amazing this is fire just a straight fire you know i actually produced some fires this year i bred my fire pied with a normal and got some fires 100 percent head pie this is just the straight fire you mix desert with the fire take a look at this this is pretty incredible it's just these snakes don't even look real when you start mixing in the desert with some of these combos and i can see you know the real craze when this first came out and everyone's like i gotta breathe this to everything Thing. it's pretty amazing so take a look at this this is a firefly which is the fire and the pastel you may have seen these before it's a pretty bright snake I'd say well it's probably one of the brightest yellow snakes that you can get as the firefly and here is the same thing with the desert in the mix look at how crazy this snake looks that is really amazing it doesn't even look real it's it's I can't even believe some of these combos Here's the spot nose. The spot nose is a really subtle morph, mixed really well. Mixes really well with clown, which is kind of interesting. And it's, I'd say it's really close to a normal. Look what happens when you mix desert with the spot nose. That is a crazy snake. Even just with the spot nose, it's pretty amazing. And here's a pied. I'm sure you've, you're familiar with the pieds. The pieds are kind of variable as far as how much white is in there. Look what happens when you mix the desert with the pie. That is pretty amazing. 
And a, and a lot of mutations, sometimes you get more or less white based on what you're mixing with it. So for example, if you mix anchi with pied, you usually get really low white pines, which is kind of interesting. And this looks like it's pretty much 50-50 and it really enhances the yellow color. So it's working really well with the pines, which is interesting. Here's the leopard ball python, and this just keeps going on and on. It's pretty amazing. And look what it does to the leopard. Leopard with the desert. Look at that. That is crazy. I've never seen any mutation work so well with so many genes. It's pretty amazing. Here is the pastavi, which is a pastel Mojave, which is kind of interesting. Now if we come over here and look at what the desert does to the pastavi, it has a dramatic in, in, uh, effect on that one too. It looks pretty amazing when you mix it with those. And take a look at this. This is probably one of the most dramatic over here. This is just a straight black pastel. And I'd say black pastel is pretty close to a normal in as far as colors and patterns. A little bit different. Uh, it works really well. It's one of the darker jeans. Look what happens when you mix in desert with black pastel. That thing is really crazy. <laughs> that is a really good looking steak. It's amazing. So I actually came over here to Morph Market just to see how popular the desert was. And if you actually want to buy a desert, there's especially if you're looking for one to breed, you have a choice of one snake, and that's it. And it's only $299. It's, it's I'd say not many people are working with the desert. And I've actually seen some collections where they had all these combinations, the desert combos, and it was like they're pulling out toy snakes. They didn't even look real. It was pretty amazing. Come to find out, it was the, the desert. And I'd say if you're into the desert, it's a pretty hard sell. Obviously, if you're here on Morph Market, there's there's not a whole big supply and I would say there's not a really big demand for desert so it's it's one of those genes it's it's uh, I'd say it's one of the most impressive genes and one of the most problematic at the same time it's it's almost like a dilemma it's like you really want to jump into the project but since nobody's really buying and they have a problem with the females and the prices are pretty much really low for deserts because nobody really wants to get into the project because there's just not the demand there so that's that's kind of where we're at right now with the desert is it's almost like uh, a really small niche market that people are just kind of playing around with just a little bit on the side but there's been there's a lot that's been done and you can actually go through all the different combinations and see the combinations of the desert which is kind of interesting so if we actually open up some of these ads on on morph market over here Here's a female pastel desert butter, and essentially the butter is the same thing as the lesser. And they actually put actually a disclaimer in here that says the females with the desert gene are infertile and should not be bred. That's kind of interesting that they worded it that way. And here's another one. I'll we'll actually open this one up. Another female. This one says um, pet only because female desert females have reproductive issues and can't be bred. So it's interesting. There's two desert females on Morph Market and they both have disclaimers, which is kind of interesting. So if you're thinking about getting into the desert, it's I'd say it's a really bittersweet project. There's a lot of people that think the combinations are really impressive, but most people shy away because of the infertility of the females. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Camo Constrictors asks, I have two ball pythons that have split scales by the vents. Are you sure they're not scaleless heads? And that is a really interesting question. As a matter of fact, I did a video, I'd say it's it's been quite a few months ago, actually when I got my scaleless heads, that pretty much the, the surefire way to tell if you have a scaleless head is to look at the scale right by the vent to see if it's split. And if it's split in half, then you have a scaleless head. And if it's not split in half, then you don't have a scaleless head. And I can kind of show you on Bobby real quick what I'm talking about when we're talking about the split scale vent. And essentially what it is, let me show you on Bobby, I'm sure you can see it easy on this thing. This is a really big snake. This is the vent right where they go to the bathroom bathroom and right where their internal uh, reproductive organs are. So if you look at this last 
scale right here, right by the vent here. This scale right here, this is actually the vent scale. And if that vent scale is actually split in two, then you have a scaleless head ball python. And if it's just one single scale, then you actually don't. And some people kind of say that that is not a surefire way to tell. And from what I've seen, I've actually been breeding scaleless heads for quite a while. I looked at all my scaleless heads. Every single one has that vent, the vent scale actually split in two. And it just has like a vertical line right through and it's split into two scales. And every single ball python that's not a scaleless head has one single scale there. So as far as my experience and what I'm seeing in my collection, if that scale is split in two, then there's a good possibility you have a scaleless head ball python. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.